welcome back, folks, to the WP Tonic Show. This is episode 409. The episodes are just going so quickly, folks. Got a great guest. He's a fellow Englishman as well. We've got Dave Froy of um, designandbuildweb.co. Dave, would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers? I will do. Hi, everybody. It's uh, fantastic to be here. Thank you for asking me to be on the show, Jonathan. I am very, very, very excited. Um, yeah, my name is Dave Foy. I, um, I run a website called Design Build Web, which teach, basically teaches non-coders how to build better, uh, better performing websites, you know, more quickly and more profitably. Um, I've been running the business since kind of like early 2017. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, you know, I, I, I make online courses and support my students and absolutely love my dream job. It's a job yeah. that I invented myself, basically. So <laughs> so we're going to be covering uh, about two to three major areas with Dave. We're going to be discussing um, how, why he started his business. He's been very successful on his training course business. We're discussing about some of the things he's learned on that. And also his training course really also covers funnels, how to utilize WordPress to build effective funnels for various business, but also with a focus on how to use those WordPress funnels if you're building a course and you're, you're looking to automate marketing automation and also funnels. So I thought he was going to be a fascinating guest because he could cover some really important areas. And I've got my Cindy, got Cindy, my co-host. Cindy, would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers? Uh, sure. Uh, thanks, Jonathan. Uh, uh, welcome, Dave, to the podcast. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Cindy Nicholson from thecoursewhisper.com. So if you are looking to create a course and need a little help about how to put it together uh, to make it really great for your students, um, you can certainly reach out to me at thecoursewhisper.com. And Cindy, it's going to be Cindy's last um, day with me, folks. She's uh, escaping. She's had enough of me. And, uh, you know, the mental state I've caused in her, she's um, giving up on the podcast and she's back. No, not, not, not at all. I think um, we've got great relationship. Unfortunately, though, Cindy's decided to become a little bit of a wanderer for about a year. She, her and her family, you're, you're going to be traveling around the world. I'm so envious, Cindy. Yeah, come September, we're renting our house out and uh, going around the world. So seeing other aspects of the world that, you know, once in a lifetime, you, you get a chance to see. So we're really looking forward to it. I just want to say, um, Cindy, it's been a pleasure working with you. Um, how long have you been on the show now? Because time goes so quick, doesn't it, Cindy? It's about, it's about a year now, I think. I yeah, it's been, it's been a real pleasure working with you, Cindy. You've been a great co-host. You put up with my terrible jokes. And uh, when you come back, uh, um, you're always welcome to come back on the show. Uh, um, but I just want to say I really appreciate you being such a great co-host. It's been a real pleasure working with you. Well, thank you, Jonathan. It's been a pleasure too. All right. Right, Dave. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, that's, such a, that's such a typical English response. <laughs> it really is. See, it's just, it's just not me, see, Cindy. Right. See, she, oh, I, In your blood, I guess. Some of my kind of um, cynical humour, Dave. Uh, um, I, I see what we, what, this is going to be interesting. interesting <laughs> really. uh, um, so, Dave, let's start off with uh, why you started your business what 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 kind of drove you to get into this world of online training and what kind of made you do the first step yeah well i uh, was a, 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 actually a primary school teacher here in the uk so that's kind of teaching children from about age five to about 11 um and i did that for 10 years in the sort of 90s uh sort of 90s to 2003 i'd always wanted to be a teacher always wanted to I've always just got kind of great pleasure from just helping people and, you know, helping people kind of progress and just get better at something. And I always, always wanted to teach from being fairly small myself, really. And that was great, but there was just an awful lot. The British education system, probably like a lot of other education systems around the world, is just, was just deteriorating into horrible bureaucracy and targets and this kind of prescriptive curriculum that 
I just decided I wanted no part of really. It's just fantastic so, when people that know nothing about your profession start telling you how to do your job, isn't it, Dave? Exactly. It's, just, it's, it's so fantastic, isn't it? It's weird because I'd actually entered the profession and was was training at the time when, you know, even as trainees, we were being told exactly what to do. So in a sense, I I it was quite normal to me, but I spent a long, long time in, in staff rooms. And because I was teaching, you know, primary school children, um, the, 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 they were kind of mostly female teachers in the staff room. And they would just be sat, just complaining all day long, constantly. And I think I saw those and I thought, I do not want to be you. I could go somewhere there, Dave. But, but, but being, I'm not going to do it, Dave. I've learnt. Cindy's kind of modified me a little bit. I'm just not going to go there, actually, Dave. Um, yeah. Cindy, do you want to ask? Over to you, Cindy. Well, it's interesting, Dave, because I used to be a teacher in the 90s as uh. well high school teacher and you know for some of the exact same reasons I left the profession and what I love is we now have this medium now that we can use our teaching experience but in a different format where we don't have to be the prescriptive teacher in the classroom so so Mm. so tell me so I'll let you finish your story in terms of how you ended up getting into what you're doing specifically but yeah. But um, <laughs> tell me what you bring as a teacher uh, into the online training world and, and how you maybe do things differently than other people. Yeah, well, it actually took me a long, long time to make that leap that be, being a classroom teacher could be something that I could translate onto something online. It took me a long, long, long time. I mean, the, the, the in-between was me becoming a web designer and thoroughly enjoying the job. And, you know, I, I, there were the aspects of web design that were preferable to teaching in the fact that you could actually finish a job and usually to somebody's satisfaction, there was an end point of a project with teaching. There was never an end, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just endless. Um, But it took me a long, long, long time. I, I actually used to, I started noticing it after a while because I had 16 years as a web designer as well, doing, doing client work. So it's been, it's been quite a long, uh, a long time. Every 18 months, I used to get this urge to teach. It was like uncontrollable. It, it overtook every aspect of me to the point where I would actually go back into schools and ask, can I come in and teach a bit, you know? And within a day, I'd be running for the hills. It's like, oh no, I've, I've just remembered. I remembered it's even worse than it ever was. So it took me a long, long time to actually, for, for my slow brain to twig, you could just do this online. Um, I thought, I mean, I, I understand the struggles that people who don't have a a, a formal teaching qualification or a formal teaching background have got huge imposter syndrome themselves. It's like, who am I to be teaching online? Who am I to be, you know, leading and and, and, and helping other people? But I had it as well. And I've got a, I've got a qualification. So it was, it was a real revelation to me to just one day, it was literally like a, just suddenly thought, wow, I could actually do this, but using the experience that I've had as a web designer and all the, all the time I've, he- I've had to help non-coders try to develop for the, you know, for the, for the web. Um, I've, spent, I've spent 16 years doing that without realizing that I can do it. So there's partly confidence. I mean, people tell me, it's, it often tell me it's obvious you were you were a teacher. I can tell you were a teacher before you even you know say anything. But I, I think I think it's just I just kind of bring that approach of. I think the key thing is actually being able to break things down. I think that's the thing. It's kind of having the mindset of I always think that I'm teaching seven year olds, basically. And I don't mean that to be patronising. I just mean just because I understand that. People just need things breaking down. They just need to understand that from where they are now to where they want to be, we need to break it down into small, manageable steps and achieve something and get praise for it and a result from it, you know. And so I think that's the thing that I really, I really bring. And maybe a bit of patience as well, you know, a bit of kind of understand, a bit of empathy, kind of yeah. understanding that other people might be struggling and to kind of preempt that maybe you know so I quite often find myself doing that when I'm putting lessons together and doing webinars and things 
quite often thinking, I know what the question, I can hear the question now, you know, so I'll preempt that and answer it right now rather than, so I think, I think there are those skills, but I will say, I don't, I don't think for a second that you need a teaching qualification to teach online. In fact, far, far from it. I think if you've got a passion for something, you've got to have a passion for wanting to help people. There's no two ways about it. If you're in it for the money, you're not going to, you're not going to last but I don't think you need any kind of formal teaching qualification and you need the passion and you need the empathy with your audience to understand that they are where you once were, you know, maybe a year ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago and, um, and then take it from there. Yeah, I think that's a really important point because uh, it's helpful to be a teacher because you may get through things quicker, but Every, if you're an expert in your field, the, the, key, the key and the trick is to try and put yourself in their shoes and break it down into manageable pieces so that they can go along that journey to eventually get to where you are, hopefully. so Yeah, exactly. And I think the thing as well is, I mean, I, I, t I teach my students this all the time. It's like, is that you only really yourself, because I'm, I mean, for one, th one, one of the things I teach a lot of is, is like marketing funnels. And so what my students are doing is actually teaching their own ideal audience via their funnels, you know, with the, with the content that attracts them and, and nurtures them and the lead magnets, all teaching, all of it. And um, they will often say, who am I, you know, to be teaching these things and who am I to be imparting this knowledge? And I feel like a bit of a fraud. And I always say, you need to be one step ahead of your audience. That's it. You don't need to be a fully qualified expert with all of the, you know, I don't know. I mean, there's just people just expect that they need all kinds of things before they've got permission to, to teach online. And you only need, to, you're an expert if you're, in fact, sometimes it's better if you're only a few steps ahead. You know, if, if, you're, if you are the expert that's been doing this for 30 years, it's sometimes hard to put yourself in the beginner's mind, I yeah, think. I agree with you 100%. Jonathan? So, um, you know, you've been running the course, you know, you, go, you know, by the information you've given me, you've been very successful at it. Have you been surprised at the su success? And what has been one of the key things that you've learned on this journey on building these courses, like, which you would like to share with the audience? Yeah. How long have we got? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, could, no, I'm noted for my long-winded questions, actually. No, 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 no. Is it, I've got a lot. Of, I've got a potentially very long-winded answer. I'll try and choose like just the just the key ones, because what I've learned has just been incredible. I think oh, one of the things is I'll, I'll kind of hit a few because I think there there are, there are quite a few important things. One is the vast importance of your email list, like actually providing value that helps your audience where they are in return for, you know, like a lead magnet or some sort of opt-in to actually grow your email list and build a relationship with them as well, you know, and actually actually kind of builds that, that sense of that you are actually friends, you are actually kind of part of a crowd, you, they, they are part of your tribe. Build it, I, I, I built an email list from day one. Version one of my website was a quick homepage that said, um, sign up for updates and it was the most terrible opt-in incentive in the world but it just kind of my my intention from day one was to collect email addresses and to build that list so that's that's number one um, number two is that it is hard and you've got to just keep going and you will feel the fear oh, it's basically just a bit like this it's kind of like you, up, you go up for a while and you kind of get better at a certain skill. It might be making videos. It might be teaching. It might be, it could be anything. All these different kind of like obstacles along the way that you kind of, you overcome an obstacle. You hit a little plateau for a while. Everything comes along and then there's another obstacle. There's another wall. There's the next step. There's the next thing. And you've got to, I think, I always tell people, you've got to understand that you will frequently hit these walls which strike fear <laughs> into you. I've had several moments where um, starting to learn how to make videos and having my face online for people to reject and ridicule and laugh at, um, that was number one. We all have it. 
Um, that was number one, where literally I made my first video. I'd never made videos before ever. And um, I actually cried with frustration because the guy at the other end of the camera looking back at me, I didn't recognize him at all. His stupid voice, stupid face, you know, just like awful. I got over that. Um, actually selling something to people was a massive barrier. I actually, when I launched my first course back in November 2017, it was, um, I'd been procrastinating for about five months before that. And every time it came to me asking for money for something, I just, it was like the physical feeling was exactly the same as if, as if I was about to be pushed off a cliff, like physically. Um, so it's kind of learning that the fear will be there and you've just got to push through because the reward at the other side is, 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 is amazing. Um, so, so there's definitely that as well. And I suppose, I suppose that's kind of a, a big thing really it is, I mean, some people aren't afraid of selling at all. It's really not a problem for them, but I think for a lot of people, it is a real barrier. And the thing that I learned, the thing that really kind of pushed me over the edge was if people don't buy my solution to their problem, I can't help them. And if I can't help them, I'm doing nobody any good. So that I actually have no problem asking for people for money, partly because I'm confident of the value that I'm going to bring. I'm confident of the transformation they're going to have as a result of that training. But ultimately, if they don't buy the thing, I can't help them. So, and I've, I've come to understand that only a small number of my audience will actually end up buying. You know, there's only a small number of them that were a small percentage generally that will, will want to buy and be able to buy and will be able to afford to buy. And that's fine. You know, that's, um, I've, I've come to accept that. So, but yeah, I think they're the ma I think they're the major things. Well, that's great. We're going to go for a break folks. We're coming back. We're going to be discussing funnels how to build them in WordPress, how to make ones that convert. We'll be back in a few moments, folks. We're coming back. We've had a great discussion with Dave. So Dave, uh, you came on my rod, uh, you've been on my radar for a while, but you really came more slightly a bit more on my focus with a webinar that you did with Troy Dean uh about building um webinars um funnels um i also got the impression and i might be totally wrong here i'm sure you correct me quick is that um a lot of your courses are aimed at kind of designers utilizing alimator the page builder is that is that basically correct yeah yeah it's, it's elementor yeah the the uh, page builder plugin for wordpress the, the the very briefly the reason for that is because when I first started the business, I'd identified I actually wanted to help. The, the focus has changed since, but I, I identified I wanted to help graphic designers be able to build the websites that they had in their heads, you know, so be able to translate the kind of creativity into the technical stuff that they needed to do online. Because I'd spent 16 years doing that informally with graphic designers I worked with on, on projects. So that was, and I, I, I trialed all kinds of technical solutions i mean not just wordpress i i open-mindedly looked at everything you know squarespace wix all kinds of different things and elementor just one hands down it's for, as a designer it's basically just like having photoshop and illustrator but in wordpress um so it was just an amazing tool really that i could i could use as a basis for my teaching but the beauty of it is, is that it allows you to build all the stuff that you would normally, people think that you need tools like click funnels and specialists, you know, lead pages and um, unbounds. But the beauty is that you can just build it all in WordPress. I actually, just to, just to kind of my own personal journey towards page builders in general within WordPress, um, I'd because out of necessity, when I started building websites in the late 90s, like 1998, I built my first website. It was all hand coding. So I had to, I had to learn how to code in order to get things onto the screen. And, um, and I had a, an aversion to drag and drop page builders and, you know, pre-built themes in WordPress. I, just, I was very, you know, I, I, I just, I believed in the purity of the code, which is nonsense. The, po the poetry that. of the code. 
the poetry of the code. Yeah, yeah. But what I realized was, is that guys like me, we were the bottleneck. So the marketers, the designers, the creatives have got an idea and they want to test it straight away. Want to build a landing page really quickly to test an idea for our audience or test an advert or test something out. And it's like, right, quick, quickly sketch out the idea. Let's go. Dave, are we ready? Um, let me just check my diary. Hang on a moment. I can fit this in in three weeks time. It's just like, oh. So all those people were, were basically bypassing me and were starting to use page builders. And it was only in, it's only when I actually, there was a moment that twigged and I suddenly thought, this is, this is democratization of the web right here. You suddenly don't need experts like me to bypass, you know, you could just bypass people like me and, and actually get results online really, really quickly within an hour, you know, and that to me just blew my mind. And, um, yeah, so Elementor is, is, is amazing for that, especially when it comes to things like landing pages and funnels and, and sales pages. It's, it's amazing. Right. Over to you, Cindy. It is amazing how, especially like if you were doing the work back in the late 90s, I can't imagine how much things have changed for you just to see the evolution of that. So, yeah. So thanks for your perspective as being a course creator. Um, and now, you know, one of your, your areas of expertise is around funnels. So, so maybe you can share, you know, we've got uh, the listeners um, are, you know, course creators are wanting to create a course. So maybe if we could uh, tap into your expertise about, you know, things they should be thinking about when they go to create their th funnel when it comes to actual courses themselves. Is there anything different than what they would do, you know, for other, you know, uh, things that they might sell? In terms of, so we're talking about in terms of actually kind of attracting an audience in order who are going to go on to buy their, go on to buy their course. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would say that the, the, you really do kind of what I ended up doing. I've ended up making lots and lots of little mistakes over the last two and a half years, but there are the various things in hindsight I would have done better. Um, the very, very first thing is to actually attract your ideal audience in the first place. You know, no funnel is going to achieve anything if there isn't traffic actually going into it. I mean, let, I mean, just to say as well, just and kind of demystify this word funnel. I mean, it's not it's not a word I particularly like. I mean, really, we're just putting in place a system that will attract the right people and qualify the right people to move them further along, so that they will ultimately buy your thing and eventually become raving fans. You know, and all that kind of thing as well. So first thing is to attract them. Now, for somebody who's creating a course, you should really have be, you know, be building up a, a, a database, a list, a spreadsheet, whatever, of all the questions people ask about your topic, you know, and use free content to answer, answer those questions. I mean, for me, it was YouTube because it's just inherently visual, showing people what to do on screen, you know. But it doesn't have to be. Whatever works for you. I got myself involved in, in Facebook groups, Elementor's Facebook groups, WordPress Facebook groups, Facebook groups for various themes. Basically, you know, was helpful, made a nuisance of myself in, at times. But what I did all the time, every single piece of content, I had an opt-in, everything. So if I had a particular video showing you how to build a particular, I don't know, particular landing page, for instance, there would be in the video, uh, if you want, the, the template for this, so you can just import it and bypass all of this, then go to my website, to this particular page, you know, give us your email address and I'll send it to you. So it's kind of already building an email list of people who are interested in, in what you are, 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 are selling. The next thing I would say is, is the other thing to kind of attract people is to have some sort of more permanent lead magnet on your page, on your website as well. So I have, I'm actually replacing it soon, but on my website currently, designbuildweb.co, right at the top, there's a big advert for like a four part video series. Um, Cause I had identified that people who might want to buy my No Fear Funnels course, probably right now they're stuck. At the, the No Fear Funnels course teaches them all about sales psychology and email nurturing. And there's all, it's not, it's not massively technical actually, but I know my audience right now are stuck. I need to build a landing page. 
So that's what the, that's what the video series is about. But they've got to give their email address to get a lot of kind of key bonuses. Now, what's what I've the, the model of course launches I've I've had until now is kind of like the open and closed model. So it's basically the, the course is shut with a waiting list, but then you know every kind of like four months maybe or maybe six months. I'll open the doors for a week um, and there's, there's a flurry of activity and lots and lots of sales and people have been waiting for ages and there's a real buzz and there's a lot of urgency because of the deadline, which is fantastic, but it's, oh my word, it's exhausting. It's absolutely, utterly exhausting. So I'm moving my courses gradually over to more of like an evergreen launch model. So the idea will be, and this is like the funnel, basically, I've got like an evergreen funnel in place. So the idea will be, um, just generically speaking, that there will be a lead magnet that people have got to opt in for something. It might be just a PDF checklist. It just might be something really, make it simple, make it easy, make it a quick win for your audience. You know, no complicated, like long eBooks or anything like that. Just something that gives people a really quick, easy win. Then like for, for one of my courses, actually the next step is the thank you page. But the thank you page actually says, um, what I'm doing is I'm basically kind of like hitting them with some extra value straight away and kind of qualifying their interest in the course is I've sent you the PDF, but, um, you can optionally watch like a, a video like masterclass where I'll actually show you how to put these things in place and also like some extra stuff as well. And I actually with this basically bypassed the whole courtship ritual of an email every day where I gradually introduce the fact that I've got a course. I kind of just go for it. So the master, they watch the masterclass. It's not, I'm not pretending it's live. You know, there's none of that nonsense of, of uh, all that kind of fake live, like live business, but, and actually kind of pitch the course at the end of that. So basically say, so here's what we've learned. You know, it's kind of a fairly classic kind of webinar structure really. And um, if you want to, you know, Shortcut, but basically a course should be the fast track shortcut to the results that you want. That's what, that's what you're paying for. So if you want a fast track shortcut to actually be, being the web designer you want to be or having the business that you want, you know, what, whatever it is for, for your particular funnel, um, then people can sign up and there's, there's, there will, you know, there's an incentive. You get it for like a hundred bucks less than it would be normally if you buy it now or, you know, I'm using them. Um, service called deadline funnel which basically allows you to have an individual deadline for everybody that comes through so they've got their own deadline basically for whenever they first enter the funnel so the urgency is really important really important if you if you say to people they can buy now or later whatever people won't they'll just you know i think it's your duty to get people off the fence um i felt weird about that for a while but I don't anymore. It's like, it's my duty to get you off the fence and get on with this training. So, and then if people buy, great, that's, that's amazing. And if they don't, they then go into like a, a very, I, I'm not pushy at all. I would never do that, but they go into another sequence where I gradually kind of explain the value of the course and the results that other people have had from the course. And then people have got an opportunity further to buy from that as well. But that's the basic funnel that I've got in place. And, you know, rather than kind of waiting along, actually kind of automate that sequence. Um, it's far better for your sanity. It's far better for your cash flow and budgets and having a, a you know, a st steady stream of predictable money coming in. Um, and also as well, having those kind of funnels in place allows you to test things. So if I decided I want a different headline on the sales page, I can, I can tweak it and immediately see the, the impact. Whereas if you've got these kind of like open and closed and you don't open again for another six months, you have no opportunity to test that hypothesis, you know? So that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Cause I, I think that provides really good insight. And I love the idea of that, that master class class offer or kind of right away. Cause you know, if people are in the position that they want to buy, you give them that opportunity. So that's great. Yeah. And I think the thing as well to understand is a lot of people, I think that, that have courses or want to make courses feel that 
by doing by giving away lead magnets, giving away free content, giving away even like another half an hour masterclass that somehow you're going to give away everything. Why would people want to buy the full course? But you've got to try and just catch people, try and understand where your audience is at the point they discover you in the funnel. They're probably really struggling. They probably aren't even sure quite where they need to go, you know. So I think if you can just help solve that initial problem for them and really kind of deliver that value, if you can do it on video, so much the better because the face-to-face trust thing is enormous. So um, I would say to people, if you're frightened of video, push through it because I did, you know, it was, it was horrible for a long, long time, but uh, I don't care what anybody thinks about me anymore. I really don't give a, I don't give a monkeys. (laughs) Jonathan. Uh, We're going to wrap up the podcast part of the show folks, but um, um, Dave's agreed to stay on and we're going to be delving into some of the uh, mechanics of utilizing WordPress and what he thinks are the strengths of WordPress compared to some of the SaaS um, courses like Kajabi and like that. Um, Dave, how can people find out more about you and what you're up to? Yeah, well, there's my main website is designbuildweb.co, which is my kind of just main website. I have my kind of blogs and, um, and, and, and regular stuff coming out. There's, um, I've got two separate sites as well for my courses. There's nofearfunnels.co, and there's a waiting list on there for when that course opens. And then there's another one, which is no stress work. It's, um, well, it's, the, the course is called No Stress WordPress, but it's no stress WP dot co and um and that's kind of like my where my other courses as well and the, if, people, if, if it's not open people can sign up for a waiting list on that as well so i'd say those three places that's great and cindy how can people find out more about you what you're up to well they can always visit me at uh, the course whisper.com or visit or um reach out to me on linkedin but i uh, just want to take this moment jonathan to thank you again for everything and uh for putting up with me for the last year and giving me the opportunity and also to the listeners to for putting up with me as well um every week as we've gone through it so again thanks dave for joining us and thank you to jonathan that's great and if you really want to um support the show go to itunes and give us a review it really does help the show and i would personally really appreciate if you can do that folks we'll see you next week with another guest another great interview which hopefully will give you some more knowledge about how to build your online course and get the success for yourself and your family that you're looking for we'll see you next week folks bye right um on to the bonus content um so what do you what do you personally feel is the um because I personally feel like page, you know, the two that I know, the, the three that dominate the WordPress community are Alimator, Beaver Builder, Divi. Uh, I know n- really practically nothing about the Divi community, uh, apart that it's very large and very loyal, very tribal. Uh, but they all are. They, the two that I know is Alimator and Beaver Builder. But I think Alimator, through their pop-up, um, um, especially the pop-up element, pardon me, of their system has really changed the dynamics quite dramatically. But I think WordPress got a bit of a bad rap because until Alimator and Beaver Builder came on the scene, but I now think it, it's a more powerful platform than Kajabi and Teachable or Learnable. What What are your own thoughts about this, Dave? Yeah. Well, I suppose there are two sides to this because there's, there's the using WordPress to, um, as, as a marketing tool. So in terms of kind of building funnels and landing pages and, um, and, and sales pages for courses. And then there's the running the actual kind of learning, learning platform on, on WordPress as well. So, I mean, I'd say the first thing just about the funnels and the marketing side of things, um, I mean, just thinking about like, the page builders, going back to the page builders in general, I mean, in a sense, they're all excellent tools. I mean, the, the way I would really say is that Elementor is the, is the most fully featured by far. It's the most forward thinking. There, there are new features sprouting out of that thing every single week, sometimes at the expense of, of, um, 
of, of the thing being kind of solid and dependable, really, and reliable. You know, sometimes it, it, it breaks because they've rolled out an update too quickly. But Beaver Builder is rock solid, absolutely rock solid. You would never worry about your website being down or broken with Beaver Builder. But it kind of skews a bit more towards developers, I would say. A lot of my friends who are developers love Beaver Builder, and I, it is great. I find Divi an utter nightmare, to be honest. I used it for a few websites. I actually have, a, I actually have an article I wrote about two years ago about <laughs> basically just, I think people thought I wrote it as clickbait, and I didn't. It was just like avoid these kind of multi-purpose themes that have just got everything in them. It's way better to kind of, you know, have specific tools for specific jobs. Um, so, so, yeah, so I would say in WordPress, I mean, generally speaking, far better to run to just just have your whole kind of marketing and funnel within wordpress there's really no need for you know an expensive tool like click funnels i mean there's nothing wrong with click funnels as such but my experience and the experience of a lot of people i know is that it is kind of in itself it's not especially reliable and it doesn't really do a great deal more than you can do yourself in wordpress and it's on well, I, I think well, I think obviously you having a having one of the top marketers as one of your founders, Russell Brent Branson helps, um, but also yeah, yeah. they 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 provide you know a kind of pathway which in some ways your course is doing inside their system. You know they provide you know this you do this step, do this step, you get this outcome. They mm. provide that where if you go into WordPress. Um, there is no guidance. You know, it's one of the yeah. things I'm trying to do with WP Tonic with our hosting, um, our hosting solution, um, where we host and we provide all the tools and then we provide guidance. That's what I'm trying to develop with a part of WP Tonic. Yeah, um, yeah. But you don't have that. But I suppose that's what, you know, courses like what you're doing and that provides isn't it? And maybe that's also one of the strengths of um, Russell's system. What do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, I think people, I mean, Russell Brunson is an amazing marketer. He's not a guy that I particularly chime with um, personally. He's not somebody that I would, I would particularly follow. I don't know, it's just a, just a personal thing. But I think he's quite, quite heavy handed. Um, and there is the sense that... Well, he's very American, isn't he? Yeah, well, I suppose. I mean, maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe it's a cultural thing. I'm not sure, but yeah, I, there there is a sense that the, the the ClickFunnels message is you you can have amazing business success, and all you need is a funnel, and all you need to achieve that funnel is our tool. Give us your money, and 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 as a marketer, that is brilliant because it's a very 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 simple message, you know. Whereas, well. You need to identify, you know, c clear understanding of your audience and their problems and the solutions they desire. And you need to do this and you need to understand this. And it's like, whoa, hang on, I'll just buy ClickFunnels. It's just easier, you know. So I think there, there, there is that message that I think is utterly, completely false. I know they've got, they've got, they do have the training in there as well. I think as well that... Well, it's kind of, I'm going to throw it over to Cindy in a second. And I, but also, it's also linked to another, you know, there's, you know, there's some big podcasters that say, you know, start a course um, and you, it, you'll get this passive income. But as you know, as anybody knows, as Cindy knows, there's nothing passive about running an online course business, is there? No, <laughs> nothing whatsoever. My wife says that to me all the time. She says, is it? Is is this? Is this little? It's a little in joke that we've got. You know, is this? Um, is this passive income? While I'm furiously, you know, doing all, all manner of different things all day long, it's like no, it's not passive at all. No. Over to you, Cindy. Oh, I was just uh, as we're winding up here. Maybe you know, given your experience creating courses, people on the phone that are you know think or on the podcast that are thinking about creating a course, what, what are some, you know, lessons that you learned that you would recommend when they go to go down this route that uh, maybe something that you've learned over your mistakes that you can help them out with? Yeah. I, I mean, for me, um, the, the, what I think what people tend to get a bit hung up on is things like the technicalities, like the platform and stuff. And I think sometimes people will procrastinate about on that kind of thing. Should I use, 
a, a hosted solution? Should I use WordPress? Should I, you know, and I, 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 mean, I think ultimately it actually really doesn't matter as much as the, 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 the teaching. The big thing that I've learned is that I, I've kind of, the, the, way that I, the way that I kind of conceptualize this in my head is that if you've got a target audience for a particular course and they are at point A, okay, so I'll have point A here, <laughs> there is only within one training experience, within one course, there's only a certain um, distance that, that, that you can take them. I mean, obviously you can have an enormous course that takes them from beginner to intermediate to advanced to everything else. But the problem is, is that people need to feel like they've achieved and finished something. Now, there's, I, I feel like there is, there is, I, and the mistake I made was, was trying to be everything to everybody. My course is going to teach you every single thing you could possibly ever want to know about WordPress ever. And uh, while it sounds great on paper, it's impossible to deliver. And people just get overwhelmed and stuck and just decide, oh God, I'm still on module three and there's 55 modules to go. It's like, oh, forget it. So I, I now prefer to think of it as they're at point A. Point B can only ever be a certain distance. So there was a friend of mine came to me the other day with an idea for a brilliant course on um, marketing automation and Zapier and all that sort of thing. And he had a beginner's bit and then an intermediate bit and then an advanced bit. I said, whoa, 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 no. You'll get people so far. That if, if your ideal audience for this course are complete beginners to marketing automation, take them so far and give them some big, big wins. And if you want to then take them from there to somewhere else, that's something different. Take them from there. You know, so people want to feel like they don't, they, if people feel like they're failing. And the other thing as well is as much as you can, it's not possible with all kinds of training, as much as you can give them things on a plate, give them the worksheet that all they have to do is fill in and the thing is done or give them the template and it's done because the more that you kind of think, well, I'm going to teach you all the concepts and all the things you need to think about. And people just, just, just want the thing done. They just want the result there and then. And um, I think the most successful cut I'm starting to learn now is give them the script, give them the template, give them the worksheet, fill in the blanks as much as possible. Um, even if as an expert, you think, Oh, but there's all these nuances and, you know, I can't just give them a script or a template. You can, you know, because where they are right now, that is awesome. You know, that plug and play is amazing because it allows them to become the hero, you know? So that, that I would say that that's my kind of main advice, not really about the tech or the delivery or anything. Um, well, yeah. you're, you're, you're speaking my language, Dave, because I, I think of the clients that I work with, those are probably the two main things that I work with because they can get, they feel like they need to give, 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 give. And it's like, that's not what people are buying the course for. They're buying it for the results. So you yeah. need to make it simple so that they don't get overwhelmed. So that is exact. I think that's fantastic advice. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. So thank you for, for that. Yeah, great. <laughs> so we're going to wrap up the bonus content now um dave thanks for coming on the show it's been a pleasure you must come back on the show i'd love coming to months because um, i've really enjoyed this conversation yeah. and you provided a lot of um value in the conversation and it's just been a pleasure we'll see you next week when we have another similar guest hopefully providing similar value to you beloved listeners and viewers we'll see you soon bye bye